When I was younger, I held a lot of anger and bullied kids at school. I was often sent home or to the counselor's office and regularly saw a child psychologist. Eventually, I learned to control my anger and felt stable, but continued to gravitate towards counselors in awe of their power to help. My heroes are those women who I called my mentors. They raised me, encouraged me, and counseled me when I needed guidance. They showed me that my mistakes were not what defined me, but my ability to realize them and grow. The way they saw me became how I saw myself, a talented artist, a natural helper, and a charismatic leader. I grew up empowered by their belief in me, so resilient to life's challenges. I moved to Washington for school and started working in a professional counseling position. Somewhere along the way, confidence had become overconfidence. The natural helper became unhelpable, and I pushed against all support. Then my greatest mentor, my mom, got cancer, and the poorly timed passing of my grandmother left me reading my mother's words at her own mother's funeral. Suddenly it seemed that my heroes might not always be there for me. Returning to school shaken, familiar forces grew inside me. I became angry and manipulative. I turned 21, and two days later, my close friend Anna died. My ego of invulnerability shattered, leaving me detached with a desolate view of life. I felt only pain and fear for more pain to come. I couldn't hold myself up. I needed help and I finally found it in my mentors, new and old. My crisis made me realize something that must have been so obvious to them. My greatest strength was not my counseling skills. I got those from surrounding myself by counselor types. It came before that in my ability to recognize my weaknesses and seek and accept help. Thank you.